Hello, Wayfarer here, and this is Season 1, Episode 1 of Wayfarer Plays Solace Crafting. Solace Crafting is a game that, uh, now it's, uh, June 2023, I purchased it from Steam, ooh, back in 2020, I believe, played it a little bit, and then got sidetracked on other things and stuff like that, and I decided uh, a few weeks ago to revisit it. And uh, I've been enjoying myself, so I wanted to share some of that enjoyment with you. And in case you don't know the game, Solace Crafting is a fantasy RPG. It involves skilling, uh, character classes, character professions, uh, building, terraforming, a whole bunch of fun stuff. And since I've been enjoying it, I'm going to share my enjoyment with y'all. Here we go. Okay, so here we are in Solo's Crafting. The music that you're hearing is not from the game itself. It's some of my music, Wayfarer music, from the Wayfarer Project music channel. Um, and we're going to start playing single player. Um, you have, you know, your single player survival mode basically up here. The creative mode here. And then you have multiplayer options where you can... Join a server from the server list. Join one directly through IP. Or, um, you know, host your own multiplayer. So, I might be checking that out a little bit later. I downloaded the dedicated server. If I want to play with some other folks, I might do some of that. But anyway, let's make a new single player character. Uh, that's the first step, is to make a character. Uh, you can use the character in multiple worlds and things like that. I cleared the characters I made for just playing through, learning the game. And so I'm going to create a new one from scratch now. Okay. And uh, I've decided I'm going to play as an apprentice, which is like the magic user class. And so... I'm going to use the name Waymage. How about that? And I'll be a man. And now we get into your archetype, which is like a class, basically. Um, squire is like your melee fighter. Uh, scout is like a ranger sort of class. Ranger, a little bit of thief. Um... And then the, the apprentice, that's what I'll be. And then there's disciple, which is like your cleric. Um, custom basically starts you in the game with um, your beginning skill points for your class and what you want to do unassigned. You can mix and match, you know, some things if you want to as you learn the game. Um, and we'll talk about more of that as we go. But then, uh, what do I want as my profession? Well, one thing about um, what I'll be doing is, you know, this is just how you start. You could definitely put skill points into other professions and beef up a few. Um, it's just to start, what do I want a little bit of an advantage on? I think I'm going to go with... Um, uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, just thinking here. Reaping, yeah, which is already selected. Um, that's basically reaping stock, which um, it'll allow me to get a little bit more f um, stock to begin the game, which is like plant fiber. And uh, I'll be able to make uh, the kind of armor that goes with the uh, apprentice archetype a little bit earlier on 
and then of course I'll be beefing up a bunch of other skills too as we go but earlier on this will allow me to get a little bit more stock so I can get better armor sooner um, and tailoring that kind of goes hand in hand because I'll be using the thread armor which is like a cloth armor to begin with now if you open up randomize you have options for randomizing your look actually I kind of like his look a little bit so you can randomize all features um, you can randomize the upper body lower body head face and colors uh, which includes skin as well as hair colors and stuff um, He's looking all right as he is pretty much so I'm not gonna randomize anything there and of course you can reset things like if you randomize some stuff you um, can reset it later if you don't like so like ah just to show you let's try upper body randomize that a little bit mm hmm you know so that's sort of thing but anyway, I'm going to go now and uh, maybe kind of, how about reset the upper body back to the way it was. There we go. But then you can go into things and uh, change some things around. Like for the head, you got your width and size and all that stuff. Wow. Let's make the uh, head width a little less. Narrow them cheekbones a bit. How about that? There we go. All sorts of stuff here. And then uh, face. I mean, <laughs> he's got a good on his face. I like that. Uh, let's see here. Um, upper body. I think I'm going to try to narrow the width a little bit. <laughs> Leave the muscle, but uh, let's see. Neck thickness, maybe a little less. Upper weight. Let's make that a little less. There we go. You're looking a little better now. Less of a gut. Now, he is a magic user, so he doesn't need such massive pecs. I mean, it doesn't really affect the gameplay. This is just looks. Lower body. I think I'm going to narrow that a little bit here lower weight how about that now the legs look a little hmm maybe I need to give it a little more beef on the leg uh, let's see here I don't want to spend a lot of time on this I'm sorry uh, but uh, leg separation, maybe make that a little less. Leg weight, I'm going to give him a little bit more to match that up at upper butt. Whoa. I think I'm going to go up to the upper body <laughs> and uh, change a little bit of the width here. Uh, breath size, I guess that means pectorals for a man. Yeah, they were kind of bulging out there a bit. He's looking actually pretty good. I'm going to stick with this now. Although the hair... Well, we have the colors here. Fine with that hair. I'll make it a little darker. And uh, facial hair, well, there's none on at the moment. And I don't plan on putting any on, so... We'll stick with that. And you can try out colors for your armor. I think a lot of these things you can go back and adjust later um, by editing your character a bit. So let's do different hair here. The hair style. How about that? There we go. And then uh, I didn't really care for the uh, facial hair choices. So I think I'll stick with that. And away we'll go. Into the multiverse, as they call it. 
Let me just see here. Name. Yep. Okay. Right here. All right. So I made the character, and then you could uh, put this character into different worlds that you have. But I cleared those as well, so I'm going to make a new world. Uh, and I'm going to call this world Wayfaria. Now, as you get to know the game, you can go back when you make a new world and look at all the different world settings and stuff. I've looked through them, and I'm fine with the defaults for now. Until I get further in the game and decide what to do. The seed is six digits. I'm going with a classic album, 5150 from 1986. There we go. So, let's create. And then you click on load and we get there. Thank you for joining me on this. Um, hopefully you dig my style laid back. I'm here to enjoy myself. Now we start off with um, a bit of a overview and some instructions and guides on the game. But we're going to be starting with this... Um, tutorial quest here on the right that's already loaded up for us since this is a new character new world so I'll close that and now you see how the mouse is moving around well when you want to move your character around it's good to hit the V key which locks the mouse so now the mouse is governing kind of like my rotational movement and the WASD keys are moving around like that alrighty sounds good so um, this in front of us is a solace it's something that uh, you can use for storage um, it's something to be upgraded to radiate out some light so you can find it um, and in the game as you spread out from the starting area which I'm in now um, you can make more solaces and use them to teleport between places. Basically, the general design of the game is here, is basically like ground zero. As you move out from here, you get uh, more and more difficult enemies. Um, and at the same time, better and better resources. But we're going to be hanging around this area to start for a while. And uh, it is on these stone foundations. These are really nine blocks, a three by three layout of stone foundations. Solaces need to be built on a foundation, but you could take the blocks to the sides, these eight blocks surrounding the center one, and you can uh, make those other things. But in any case here, I think the first thing it wants us to do is to access the solace. You see the black uh, message there at the bottom with the white print. Uh, it's telling us F to interact. That's your interact key. And from this point, we want to go into storage where there is some stone stored up for us that the tutorial wants us to take out. So we can kind of like select the stone and we're going to we see at the top we already have it selected we're on withdraw so that means you can withdraw this stone once you selected it then you say how much you want to withdraw we'll just say all 15 is what we want and then we hit withdraw okay and uh then we can close it out right down here now we're going to hit the i key um the tab key is no longer for inventory found that out pretty quick um, in a lot of videos they're saying you know tab well it's no longer tab it's I so we're going to hey there we go that's the use for this a, a lot of the other videos on the game are older and things have changed so we have our 15 stone right here in our inventory now it wants us to make a stone club out of it from this inventory screen you can also go to crafting and that's what we'll want to do stone is a masonry masonry item so we go to the masonry category I'm going to keep double clicking and then under weapons because we're going to make a stone club so you have your category of type of crafting you're doing and then your categories of types of items that you're crafting 
So we'll select our stone club here. It gives you the info here. Pretty weak weapon to start, but you start small and you work your way up. So we're going to craft it. Ta-da! And we completed that task as well as I believe we got some skill points now for crafting. Let's take a look at the skills tab here so you can see it. There's different categories of skilling areas. There's your attributes. It's kind of like your strength, intelligence, wisdom, those sorts of things. We'll be adding skill points to those later as we earn them. Um, harvesting. This is like when you're gathering resources and it has the different categories. Reaping. You see, I already have two there. And um, I haven't earned any more to add to it, but it basically gave me a two point boost to my reaping strength. Your strength basically means how much of the item that you're harvesting do you get. And that's good because I want to be able to get plenty of stock to begin with to make my armor. Um, and then the other categories, we have skinning, mining, skinning is getting hides off of creatures, mining is mining uh, metals, and um, logging is, of course, chopping wood, and then quarrying. Now, none of these um, would have skilled up yet because I haven't done any of this, but we got our two bonus from the beginning on reaping, which I selected when making my character so other than that we have crafting and um, here it has its different categories so crafting masonry items um, is what I just did but making a stone club wasn't enough to give me any extra skill points to assign there or anything so anyway that's a little bit of the skills we'll be getting back to that later let me see what does it want us to do next. Okay, it wants us to equip this stone club that we made. So we go back to inventory. Here is the club. And then over here is kind of like a character sheet sort of thing. And what we're going to do is click on adventuring. That's for when you're going out and possibly engaging in combat. So we want to drag this stone club right down here to our slot. This is your weapon and shield slot. And then this is your alternate weapon and shield slot. So you could actually hit the C key when you're adventuring to switch your, your uh, fighting stuff. And uh, all right, so we successfully dragged that in. Now what it wants us to do is to go to a stone and quarry from it. We got plenty of stone around. And I'm going to go to this one because what I'm going to do while I'm harvesting resources is try to clear stuff off of my uh, surrounding area here next to the solace. Because some of the things I want to do require flat ground and you got to get obstacles out of the way. Now you can hit F, um, but you know, then you have to keep hitting it. If you hit Control F, it'll just keep quarrying rock. Now, we are technically doing this with our bare hands. So, a little bit of suspension of realism there. But we need this stone. And, hey, no complaints. In Minecraft, you're taking about part trees with your bare hands, you know? So, but da da we got a ta-da. That means something was earned. Probably quarrying, because that's what I'm doing right now. I'm harvesting stone, which is quarrying. And then we're going to take a look at that in a moment. Let's just see what it wants us to do next in this tutorial quest over here. Uh, but it then wants us to... Yeah, gather up some stone and then go to to the masonry trap tab and we are going to cast we're gonna yeah hold on because I know there's a few things at the start that I want to see what this one is 
Okay, yeah. It wants us to make a sledgehammer. So I guess we're going to go to crafting. We're already on masonry, but instead of weapons, we're going to go to tools. And it wants us to make a sledgehammer, which is used for quarrying stone. So now we'll get more stone because we'll have a tool that was actually used for that. So let's craft our sledgehammer. Then we go to the inventory. And we're going to do the similar thing as before, but instead of from the adventuring tab, we go to the harvesting tab. That's where you can slot up your equipment for harvesting things. And the sledgehammer goes right there. So I believe that's what the uh, tutorial was asking us to do there. It's kind of hard on the stone foundation back there to read the white print. Sorry about that. Okay, level quarrying. Basically, it wants us to quarry enough that we get to the next level in skill for quarrying. Let's see if we did. So we go to our skills page and we go to harvesting and we go to quarrying. And yes, we have one quarrying points already earned. So now we can select what it's asking us to select. It's the uh, strong hit. And this is like an action that you can use from your hotbar in order to get a stronger hit while you're quarrying stone, which gives you the chance of getting more stone than you normally would. And so I'm actually going to keep this main hotbar that corresponds to the number keys for my um, combat stuff, combat and defense. So I'm going to hit this up arrow here. Oh, I did have it. <laughs> and that gives me a second hotbar where you shift in the number key of your choice to select things. And I am going to, first of all, add this skill by hitting upgrade here. And then I'm going to drag this skill action. I guess you could call it a special action. I'm going to drag that there. So now when I hit shift one, I will employ strong hit. And we get to try that out on another stone. How about that? Let's go over here to this one. Now, you can hit Shift 1, and that engages a strong hit. I'm just doing this to show you. All right, we have 14. Now, if I hit F, which is a normal interact. Well, I can't do that with this thing open. There we go. You see, we went, we got two stone. I think we were getting one stone per hit before when we had our bare hands. Now with the sledgehammer, we're getting two. But now let's see how many we get with the strong hit. Shift one. Uh, that's a lot more. <laughs> that jumped up a 13. But the most efficient thing to do is actually just hit your control F. Because a strong hit has a bit of a cooldown thing in between each hit for your mana to recover. Mana being, let me get my mouse cursor out so I can show you over here. Once again, that's the V key to lock and unlock your mouse. Up here at the top is your temperature. That's green. Uh, your food is right below it. Your water is right below that. And then the longer bars here are your strength stamina and mana so mana is when you're using special actions or casting spells or recalling to the solace which we'll talk about that is um all stuff that uses mana that does recover over time but uh you got to keep an eye on it to make sure you're not overusing it so anyway what i was before explaining all that what i was talking about here is um, we could do our control F and then periodically hit shift one and get a strong hit in. Uh, I think it already mined it away before I got one in there. So let's just do that again. Control F. So it's repeatedly mining. And then every now and then hit a shift one, get a strong hit in. It just goes a little faster that way. All right. So anyway, let's see what it wants us to do next. Uh, 
Okay. Wants us to see that there is a map in the game. M is for map. And on this map, um, zoom in a little bit here. What we see, since we're so close to the solace, the marker for our character is pretty much on top of the solace here. This white is the marker for the character. It looks like a little mushroom. And the pointy arrow thing is the direction you're facing. And right behind me, that's the solace. As you see, it came up there. So we close the map. And then it's also telling us about the journal, which is the J key. Um, and this is where you have tutorials and quests. And in fact, um, we're in one right now. So let's see what else we have here. Uh, craft a pair of simple pants. Now, our simple pants are going to be made out of stock. And I believe that's one right over there. But actually, to be more efficient about it, since I've already gotten some stone, I'm going to make a few more tools. So I'm going to go up here to crafting. And the tools are already up here. A few more stone tools. I want to make a stone sickle. Which is right here. That I am going to use because I'll get more stock using that than if uh, I were just using my bare hands. So I'm going to drag that sickle on over here. I'll be making the rest of these stone tools here as well. So now I can go over to this stock and I'm going to hit control F. Now I can't use the strong hit on it, but it has its own version of that called strong swipe, which after we have enough skill points, we could put on it. There, I think we already have it. So let me stop. Because I'll want to use that to get as much out of this stock as I can. See, I'm already got 12. Let's go to my skills. And we're going to go down to, we're on harvesting category. And we're going to go to Reaping. And we have... Oh, I thought that Tada meant I earned a skill point. I didn't. <laughs> I thought I had gotten a skill point by now. I was going to put it on Strong Swipe. But hold your horses. It'll come. Strong Swipe is basically this harvesting version of Strong Hit. Strong hit for quarrying stone. Strong swipe for reaping stock. So I got all of that. Now I am, since I set that as my uh, harvesting, especially at the beginning of the game when making the character, I will get um, more of that than if I didn't because my... Ooh, I hit Shift F instead of Control F. So here's some more stock. It's asking us to make a pair of simple pants, but we're going to make uh, the rest of the simple clothing items too. They are technically armor. They're just not very good armor. And yeah, it takes a little bit, but the game does get faster as you go on and you skill up and get better items. Also, here's the stock I reaped. I also got three water orbs, which I can drink. And that would have raised my water level down here. Now my food's pretty low, so I notice there's something right next to me here. Is this edible? Let's see. This is King's Leaf. Nope, that we'll be using that later. That's uh, more of an herb, less of a food. Well, it's not a food. Let's get some more stone. Make sure I have enough to make. Uh... There, get that strong hit in there every now and then.
because we want to make our tools. And then we are also, let me just look around this area. I don't want to go too far away because I'm not really ready to fight. But I just want to see if there's any food items laying around here. It's getting dark. And we'll be able to do a little bit of something about the darkness. Here in a moment. I was just seeing if I had any nearby food. Some of the food items, the vegetables, are a little small. But the pumpkins are big, easy to see. It's night time, folks. Ooh, getting scary. Now, this area is, you know, within the first 250 meters around your starting solace. It's pretty safe. What is this? Well, that's King's Leaf again. It's probably the same one. Now, let's just keep going. Food. My uh, hunger bar should hold out until tomorrow. Until it's morning. And then I can look around for stuff. Uh, I am going to craft the rest of these. Skidding knife. For skinning hides off of creatures. Already made the sickle, so we're going to make the pickaxe. That's for mining metals. Or. And then there's the hatchet. <clears throat> which I'm about to use on this tree. So go back to inventory, and I'll drag each of these to their appropriate slots. I'll get more wood by using a hatchet than just uh, using my bare hands on this tree. So I'm going to hit Control F and go to town on it. Now trees take a little bit, but what I'm doing is I want to get some timber from the tree. That's your raw resource is timber. There's raw resources and refined resources. Hold on just a second. I got a tada there. I want to see what that is. Yeah, I got some timber so far. But we go to skills. I have one unassigned thing here for reaping. Now I have Strong Swipe ability. It gets triggered from the same hotkey as Strong Hit. Basically, there's a strong something in each of the harvesting categories. As long as you have one of them dragged here, you can use this hotkey to execute all of them. But let me check logging. I got one there, so I can queue that up. So as I do the rest of this tree, I'll be getting more wood if I do the strong hit. So once again, I'm just hitting shift one every now and then. And it sneaks in a strong hit amongst the other regular hits. And this is so I can make a torch. I think I can make one right now. I forget. Maybe I have to make lumber first. Process the uh, timber into lumber. See, timber is a raw resource. Stock is a raw resource. Stone is a raw resource. We got to make some crafting stations in order to refine them. So let me go over here to... Uh, ba, 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 da, ba, 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 crafting. I want to see if I can make a torch like this, or does it have to be lumber? So I'm going to turn off tools. I'm going to change the category from masonry to woodworking. And then look at tools there. Torch needs one timber. That's it, baby. So I can craft one. 
Then I go to my inventory, and there's a slot for the torch. It's under adventuring. You drag it over here to its slot, and then you have an on-off switch for it. There we go, we have a little more light on the subject. Now, what the tutorial's been asking me to do here for a little bit is to craft some simple pants. So what I'm going to do is change woodworking to tailoring. Now, you can select multiple categories in these rows at the same time, and they'll just have them all on the list. Um, you can select all or none up here to either have all or none of the categories selected. It's a way of clearing it when you go to none. But tailoring, and it's armor. Not very good armor, but it's armor. And so let's craft our pants. And I might as well craft the rest of these. I made the pants. That took five stock. I still need 5, 15, 25, 30 more stock in order to do the rest. Do I have enough? Yep. So let's do one of the rest. We did the pants. Do the shirt. I believe that was shoes. Hood and then gloves. So I'm adding extra things in here from the tutorial. Well, in addition to what the tutorial is asking me to do. Because it would be good to do. So we're under inventory and then the category wardrobe is how you equip this stuff. Your hood's on top. Then comes, I think, shirt. Then your gloves. Then your pants or leggings. In this case, it's called pants. And then shoes. There we go. And as you see, we are now wearing those things. Incidentally, the scroll on the mouse lets you zoom in and out so you can technically go into a first person view here. All right, let's see what it wants us to do next. <clears throat> All right, it wants us to make a forge and place it down. Now to start, I'm gonna place things here on these foundation blocks. Um, just for the time being until I build a house, which I'll do fairly early on. Um, so we got to go to our inventory and make a forge first. Go to crafting. See, by double tapping them, I cleared everything. A forge is under masonry and then facilities. All your crafting stations are in a facilities category. Some of them are masonry, in other words, made out of stone. Some are woodworking, made out of wood. But there we go. We have made a forge. And now to put it down, no, we have not. We have 46 stone. Forge. Oh, I need 50 stone. So let's get some more stone. And we'll make our forge. Right over here. Shift one. An extra hit in there. There we go. We should have enough now. Yep. When it's red, you don't have enough. There we go. Now we go back to our inventory, select the forge, and hit place. Now I'm going to zoom out here a little bit, places better. You can use the control key to snap it to a grid. And you can use the Z and X keys to rotate. I'm just using the control key to snap it to the grid. 
There we go. So it fits into place nice and cozy there. Now, I assume this is so we can smelt some iron ore. So I'm going to look for some iron ore as well as food items. I made the uh, pickaxe, so we'll be getting more iron ore than if we were using our bare hands. Iron ore kind of looks like stone, except it's white with some black splotches. In fact, I think that's iron ore there. Yep. Now, I can't use strong hit on that because I didn't queue up that skill yet. I didn't get a skill point to do so. There we go. In fact, we could stop now so we can get a strong hit in. Because we're going to go here to skills. I heard the ta-da. So if we go to mining. Yeah, we have one unused skill point. So now we can put it in here. And we use the same hotkey for this, which is strong pick. As we would for strong hit, you know. Strong swipe and strong cut. Then I'll hit control F so it keeps going. And throw in a shift one every now and then. Oh, don't know if I got it or not there. In any case, ooh, we got an essence as a gift there. Essence of iron, which we will store up. Um, I don't think this will go in the solace, because the solace, you can only store raw and refined items there. Um, these are all raw items, the ore, the timber, the stock, and the stone. But we're about to refine one of them. Back at the forge. Oh, there's some pumpkin, there's some food. We got two, in fact. And in fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat one. And one of them I'm going to turn to seed. I'll put this down here. And eat one. Pumpkin gives you five food points, or whatever they call it. So, I mean, we're doing okay. But we want that seed. You can get growing pretty early on in the game. Where's my solace? There it is. Oh, by the way, the zero on the hot bar is your recall button. It uses some mana. Um, but that's how you can recall yourself back to your solace. Basically, you teleport. So now we're going to open the forge with the F key. Put in our iron ore, and then one timber is all it takes. So I'm going to split off here one timber. Oh, I didn't do that properly. One. Because all it takes is one timber to burn your forge and smelt. Uh, however many iron ore you are able to fit in there. There we go. And that's how it goes. Well, it only uses one, so I don't really need to split it there. I can just drop them in, and it'll just use one. So anyway, let's take our iron ore here. Now let's look at our crafting, because what it's asking us to make is a sawing station. And that's under woodworking. But iron is part of the recipe so woodworking we go to facilities and we have sawing station right here yeah it was 20 timber and 10 iron so now that we made this iron from iron ore that is called a uh, refined material or a refined resource the refined as well as the raw can be stored in a solace, but special items like that or facilities or items like your tools, armor, weapons, 
that none of those things can be stored in the solids. It's just raw materials or refined materials. So let's place our sawing station down. Pop it there. Left click it into place. Now, we're, I think we're continuing to make a few more crafting stations here. We want to play place a smithing station, which really kind of looks like an anvil. But it's called a smithing station. We have 16 iron. I don't know if that's enough. The smithing station is under the uh, smithing category and facilities. Nope, we need uh, 10 lumber and 20 iron. Now lumber, just like iron ore is a raw resource and timber is a raw resource. Um, iron, not iron ore, but iron that we just smelted is a process resource or refined. And the refined version for timber is lumber. Basically you're cutting timber into lumber. And that's real easy. You just drop this stuff on here. I might as well convert all of them into lumber. Now we need more iron. And actually more timber because timber is what you use to refine the iron. So uh, once again, I'm going to try and clear out this stuff that's right around the solace so I can start flattening some land eventually. And then we need to find another iron. So we'll head down towards the water. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to get a bunch of iron because there's a couple things I want to do, to be honest with you. I'd like to be able to plant these pumpkin seeds. And you need some iron to make some items that you need for growing food. Trees can take a bit. That's all right. I find the game relaxing. And hold on just a second there. I think it notified us with all this whacking away that we're doing that we got another logging skill point to assign. Two, in fact. Now I could put them ba under basic strength here or under strong hit. I think I'm going to put them both under strong hit. Because the strength, which is basically a passive attribute, that's what the green plus means. Strength and speed are passive attributes. So whenever you're logging or doing any of the other harvestings that have similar, they all have their own strengths and speeds associated with them. Um, when you're doing them, like for example, this will always... When I put my first skill point in, it'll give me a 0.1 logging strength bonus with every hit. But the strong hit, when I queue it up, that gives me, at this point, now that I've, if, well, when I add one more skill point to four, it'll give me plus six strength. So right now we have a plus 5.5 .5 strength. So whenever I queue that, I get. A lot more of a strength bonus than I would from the passive skill in other words that's why I like to load up these that's why I like to load up these uh, strong hits and strong cuts and strong picks and stuff first and then I'll begin uh, loading up the others once again I'm just clearing out some space here I know this isn't iron and actually iron is probably the next thing I want to get if I I'm going to keep on the tutorial thing, but I just saw this rock here, and I just want to get rid of it. There we go. We always need stone anyway. What are you? Are you iron? Yep, this is iron ore. I start with a shift one, then I hit the control F. 
and then periodically hit shift one after that. Uh, I should probably get a little more iron because I have a few things coming up that are that I want to do that are going to require iron. And these are all stone. I don't want to take the time to go through all those, although eventually I will. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's stone. There we go. And it is to your advantage when you get skill points like that to kind of stop what you're doing, apply it, and then go back to it because you'll get more. Yep, this is iron. Yes, it is an enjoyable game. Nice and relaxed. Except when you get into combat, then it gets then it gets a little heated. But it's still it, but it's fun. I'm gonna be doing a lot of the uh, crafting stations and building early on because I like to have you know that stuff taken care of, so to speak. Um, so yeah, I need to refine this iron this iron ore what am I doing F and you can just right click and it puts things into place and what I saw from last time is what am I doing with all this timber here yeah I could just drag my timber in it'll only use one then I bring my timber back I keep my raw resources there And then right next to it. Oh. <clears throat> we got essence of wood. That's another useful thing. They're used in crafting recipes as you go further in the game. There we go. Now. It wants us to make the smithing station. We have enough iron and lumber to make it now. We made it. And we are going to select it and place it. And I'm going to put it right here next to the forge. This seems like a logical place. You can also pick these things up. You hit F on it and you go to pick up here. The upgrade options for later when we have the ability to upgrade things. I wanted to put it right here. Save my space a little bit. All right. So I showed you that at least. And now what? I think what it wants us to do now is to make a level one hatchet. Now here in our when you go to inventory and attributes here we are a level zero character but depending on that caps us as far as our weapons we cannot make a level one weapon but if we go to skills go to crafting under smithing because we're about to do some smithing here these are where you can assign points to the quality of smithing that you're going to do uh, or the, the items certain smithing items will unlock when you select these things here with those skill points but I see my smithing is zero I would I wouldn't be able to make a level one hatchet at this point. So I can't do that next. Basically, your um, crafting skill level needs to be 
at the level that you're going to be making. Let me go back to that and see if I can make myself clear. <laughs> Inventory crafting. No. Just go to skills. Or wait a minute. No. Crafting. Sorry. Inventory crafting here. I'm level zero. What's the... My skill in smithing. Scroll down. I think the other window was showing it, so I was all right. But yeah, smithing is zero. I'm at 20 experience points out of 25 to get to level one. So what I can do is other smithing things until I get to that point. So what I'm going to do here, let's go to the smithing category, tools, hold on, smithing, come on, tools, I can make a hoe, because that one, it doesn't matter what level it is, you see it doesn't even give you a chance to level that up, so I can make just a regular hoe, I wanted to make that anyway for some farming and another thing I need for farming is a watering can both of those take eight iron now let's go to our inventory and then the harvesting category, we can drag these into their places. The hoe goes here. And the watering can goes here. Now, one thing I was trying to point out before, and I, I just want to make sure I am clear about it. The crafting skills is different than your, I mean, your crafting levels are different than your actual level. But if you're crafting level, like when we get smithing to one, which we just did, we can make level one tools, but we can't make level one weapons. The weapons category requires that your character's level gets to level one. So we got to do a little bit of fighting to get this experience up. The only way to get your level up in um, your character's level is through fighting. So there is your skill level uh, for crafting, and then there's your level of your character. And I could, you know, I can make I can make a hatchet, and I can make the other tools out of iron, but I won't be able to make any iron weapons at this point. Well, I can make iron weapons, but I can't make a level one iron weapon. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I can make a level one hatchet because it's just a tool. And I'm going to make one because the quest is asking us to do it. So we got a level one hatchet craft. Okay. Now we go over to the inventory here. And we go to harvesting. And you see this hatchet here? That's the stone one. And it's showing it up here. It's a stone hatchet. These cannot be upgraded in levels. Now to make things even a little bit more confusing, in addition to levels, there's also tiers. You see this is level one, tier zero. Tier is the tier of the resource quality you're using. Um, until we move further out, we're not going to get tier one materials. But we can still get a level one hatchet, which is still better than... And especially since it's an iron hatchet, it's better than a stone hatchet that is level zero. Now, what I can do is you can make a trash bin to get rid of items you're not going to use anymore. Or you can um, deconstruct them and stuff, I believe. I'm going to try that out. But the first thing I want to do is start making... Uh, is I want to make a storage chest so that I can put some things in. So I'm going to depart from the uh, quest here a little bit and let's make a storage chest. I think I need to make a woodworking station before I can make it.
but let's check. I'm going to go here to crafting. It's under category woodworking. Turn off smithing. And then let's go to, I think the category is facilities. And we look for storage chest. Right here. Nope, it just takes 15 lumber. So I don't need... And it's made using the smithing station? Huh. Okay. So I just made a chest. Let's plop that down. And store some of the excess stuff we have on us in it. And, uh... I don't see it here. <laughs> Let's look at that again. Let's look at that again. Storage chest. I'm clear on the 15 lumber. Lumber storage chest. Craft. There it is. I don't know what happened before. Perhaps I had unselected it or something. So now, here we go. In this case, I want to rotate it. So I'm going to use the Z key or the X key to rotate counterclockwise or clockwise. I'm looking for the latch that shows that it's the front. Just visually, it looks nicer when you have the latch right in front of you. I'll zoom in. Now, I don't. The latch is on the other side, so keep going. Then I'm going to hit control and lock it on the grid so it's a little bit more lined up and stuff. So I'm going to put like excess stuff in here for now. Later, I'm going to have tons of chests. Okay, so I made that hoe and that watering can because I want to do a little bit of growing. And, um, and I'll be finishing this episode off with... Um, with that growing and so just a little bit before I do that um, I've, I you can grow things in in either a planter or on the ground uh, the difference is a planter you can only grow one item per planter Planters will go on like stone foundations or floors. They go on stuff like that. Yeah, another pumpkin. Yeah, it is. It just looks a little weird. There we go. It's in the middle of some flowers. Once again, I'm just going to take a seed from this. The seed icon looks just like the Thing it's a seed for except it has a little mark there then I'll eat that one okay now the so the planter ooh, is this something else oh that's King's leaf but I do want to get it out of the way here it would be considered an obstruction so the planter would be something that would take up a whole block like it could go right here on this block and I could grow one thing in it Whereas if, when you grow in the ground, you can put four items per plot. But in order to grow things in the ground, you need to flatten the land. So I'm going to do a little flattening here. This episode's chock full of information. So you hit the Y key. That's your terraforming. <clears throat> It'll free up your mouse, but if you right click, then you can use the WASD keys to move yourself. When you release right click, the WASD keys basically are moving this grid work. So basically, I'm going to move it right up here. So this is basically a three by three um, diagram of the levels of the tiles 
the ground is divided up into square areas called tiles and it shows whether they're raised or lower compared to a certain reference point which we're going to set in a moment but here in this grid work that shows you things it's saying this tile is lower these two are flat this one's flat this one's flat this one's flat these three over here really are all lowered in comparison now you see two red marks here that means there's an obstruction the obstruction will prevent me from flattening and that obstruction really is this <laughs> it's the uh, foundations here so I'm gonna hit the D key go one to the right and now you see we no longer have obstructions if there was a rock a tree or even a vegetable here it would be considered an obstruction and you have to remove them so here we have flat 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 what I'm gonna do is click this button here to put it in an automatic mode the diagrams change but it's still showing these are flat 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 and now if I hit flatten that flattens the center tile so this one in the center gets flattened anytime you use that basically you're instructing this tile to flatten it's just showing you what the other tiles around are are they lower or higher now I flatten that I have three and three here that are all flat that's good I'm now gonna hit lock flatten level so that means the level that these guys are all at here well it's really referring to the center one but the level I set for that is what it's going to use as the reference point now as long as I keep that locked so that means I can take these three over here that are all lower and raise them in relationship to this one so I just hit the D key to go on over and now since this is locked we've locked the reference point as to what flat is or what at what height or level of ground the flatness is I can hit flatten again and it flattens the center one now as I move this around I can flatten the center um, tile over here for example flatten So now you see we have three and three flatten here. This one I need to flatten up here. So we go one further, make, oh, we got an obstruction. So we won't be able to flatten that one till we remove the obstruction. And what obstruction is that? It's probably this log here. Now I can't, I can't do it until I get out of terraforming. So let's get rid of this. What I'm doing is I'm flattening a few areas here because this is going to be my farm plots here. They have to be flat for you to be able to hoe the ground. The game just requires it. That's, that's the thing. It has to be flat before it lets you do it. Okay, there we go. This is the center tile I wanted to flatten. there we go so we have flat flat let's go to the right all right we're obstructed by this so this whole area of tiles here like two tiles wide next to the uh, solace I can't flatten so the farm is gonna be these tiles here and I go over one and flatten these let's move over here yeah, there's no obstruction. So we flatten it. And let's get this one up here. So I'm going to move it forward one. Flatten that. There we go. I think we're I've flattened enough here. But let me see we're flat oh there's
there's an obstruction there. Basically, I'm flattening a bunch here. I'm flattening more than I need to. Um, so what, I, what I'm actually going to do is make some plots and then... Uh, and then show you the growing stuff because it's good to start growing some food early got two pumpkin seeds they can grow three pumpkins per seed so now I'm gonna try and organize this a little bit let's do the terraforming again that's why all right we're flat there Can't do that too close to the solace, the foundations of the solace. And you also got to stand outside the grid work. But I'm going to flatten here. Flatten here. Right in here. Right in here. Right in here. Good to flatten a lot of air before you build on it because your foundations for building will keep you from flattening. Is there obstructions? All right. Oh, actually, I was standing in the middle of it there and it let me do it. Okay, we flattened plenty for now. I'll keep clearing out boulders and trees and stuff but basically what i'm thinking and i don't have to make it all flat you don't have to like for building a house it doesn't have to be flat for this for that um it's just going to be for my growing plots which i'm going to put here because instead of doing the planter i'm going to do plots in the ground because um you can grow more in them so, and it'll look nice having a little farm next to the house. Uh, so, what are we doing? We're going to select the hoe and go use. Red means you can't do it there. And that was because I was standing there. But this is flat because I've been doing some flattening. So now I can hit left click. And it made, you see there, it's a plot. A growable plot basically now I need to move out of the way and somehow I'm too zoomed out it's not letting me there we go left click left click no that's yellow that means that's not flat I'll see if I can make it flat actually I don't think I can because those foundations are in the way. And this is not flat here. So I have two rows of flat stuff, it looks like. There we go. Now let me pull out the terraforming, see if I can get that tile flat there. Well, the foundations are in the way. Hmm. I just want to get this one flat here. How about this? 
maybe I like manual mode flattening requires yeah but no it's not gonna do can I raise this by hitting raise nope so it's one of those things where I can't do it maybe let's try building let's hit B for building then you go to select or create we could select this and then I have that block selected can I deconstruct it if I was thinking I could take this out but it's not giving me I know that I'm really diverging from <laughs> yeah I'm diverging a lot here so I guess my farm will just have to have this unflat thing in it because <laughs> right, I was trying to take that apart and I didn't see the way to do it the way I'm used to but it'd be nice so anyway let's finish this off let's just grow start growing some food maybe it'll let me unplot this can i unplot it No, I don't see a way to do it, but I'll check that out later. I don't want to take any more time. This video was going so well till I got into this. So let us finish up what was going to be done. I am going to get some water. I have the watering can on me, which will allow me to get water and to water those plots. I'm not going to water all of them. I'll just water one of them. I only have two pumpkin seeds. So. <sighs> Let me just go over to this water here. Hit I. Click on the watering can. Go to fill. And right click on it and you can see its contents. We have a whole bunch of water in there. So now let's go back. And um, the thing is, I mean, there is rain in the game. That'll irrigate your crops, but it's not raining right now so I need to water them and basically when I like to do it when I'm planting so here we go we got two seeds in a plot like this you can put four so each of these plots can have four so what we're gonna do first is plant them plant these two seeds to put one there Put one there, and if I had two more, I could put them there and there. But now that I've planted them, I can go to my, no, my watering can is in its slot. So now I just look at the bottom of the screen, and when you're hovered over one of the plants, it tells you its growth stage. But when you hover over some area that in the plot where there is no plant, it tells you how much water is there. So I hit the F key to add more. It looked like it was already somewhat wet, interestingly enough. But there, that's enough. You put 100 water in a plot like that, that will water them enough until they're grown. And we will have six pumpkins that we can pick. Use some of them for seed and then grow and then eat the others. So I've already got my farm started. I am in pretty cool shape, I think. What I think I'm going to do off screen 
before starting the next video is make the rest of the tools here in iron and I'll make them level one since I can. My smithing is up to that level. And um, what on? That's my level one iron hatchet. What's in there? Level one, tier zero, iron hatchet. Do I have two? Do I seriously have two iron hatchets? Did I make two? What am I doing here? Let's just pull this out. I have two level one iron hatchets. Well, one of them is going in the chest. For later, maybe I can deconstruct it and get some of the resources back. But, yep. Okay. And let's put that king's leaf away as well. So, anyway, anyway, thank you for joining me. I hope you found this episode informative and helpful. I uh, hope you enjoyed the ride with me. Please like, share, subscribe. Help a young YouTuber out. Well, not young, but... Uh, <laughs> very early on in channel development and uh, that will be it for this occasion and I thank you for joining me uh, till next time stay free and take care